Iowa, came over to the United States, to Denver, Colorado, to go to college. He wanted to experience college life here in the United States. But he didn't really want anyone to know he was a prince. It wasn't long before he met a young woman named Inga Sargent from Austria. The two of them had a lot in common. They spent some time together. And it wasn't very long before they fell in love. But the prince still kept his identity a secret. All through their engagement, all the way through their wedding day, Inga never knew she was marrying a prince. After they got married, they went on their honeymoon to Burma to see the prince's parents. When they arrived in the harbor in Burma, there was this huge celebration going on. There was a band playing, and people were tossing flowers all over the place. Inga looked over to her husband and said, why is all this celebration going on? And her husband said, well, Inga, they are celebrating our arrival. You are now a princess. And all of a sudden, Inga looked at her husband in a totally different way. Here in the word of God before us this morning, the disciples of Jesus looked at him in a totally different way. Jesus had been their teacher. He had been their best friend. Jesus had done some amazing miracles in feeding over 5,000 people, in healing lepers from their disease, and even in raising people from the dead. Some people got very angry with Jesus and the disciples saw them crucify him on a cross. Then they saw Jesus alive and risen from the dead. Jesus now had been with them for 40 days and now he was saying goodbye to them. Jesus said, this is what I told you when I was with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. The Messiah will suffer and die. And on the third day he will rise from the dead. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what the Father promised. And then when Jesus led the disciples to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. And then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed in the temple praising God. Who was this man they called Jesus? Who was he? He certainly was no ordinary man. He was spoken of by the Old Testament prophets. He was risen from the dead. He ascended up into heaven. Who was he? Well, this Ascension Day tells us three important things. And the very first thing Ascension Day tells us is who Jesus really is. You see, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Savior of all people from sin and death. We say this together every Sunday, don't we? When we recite the Apostles' Creed. We say that we believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. We say that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose from the dead, and then he ascended 
into heaven. This is what we believe about Jesus. Jesus is our Lord and our Master. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. No one's above Jesus. All of this was confirmed at the ascension of Jesus into heaven. No wonder the disciples were filled with joy and worshipped him. They had been in the presence of God himself. Do you feel that today? Do you feel that here today? Do you feel like you are in the presence of God? Every week we gather here to worship our God. Every week we gather here to worship Jesus who ascended into heaven. Every week we worship Jesus who forgives all of our sins, who overcomes death for us, who promises us an eternal life with him in heaven. We should be filled with joy, shouldn't we? We should look forward to this special time to be able to worship our great God each and every week. There's a second thing the ascension of Jesus shows us today. The second thing is it tells us what we are to do. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said to his disciples, you are witnesses of all of these things. Jesus' last instruction to his disciples was that they were to be witnesses for him to everyone around them. In 1985, there was a movie called Shoal. This movie was about the tragedy of the Holocaust. In this movie, there was a Jew by the name of Philip Muller. Philip was watching as his fellow Jews were being taken into a gas chamber to die. And he felt like he had no reason to live anymore, and so he walked into the gas chamber with them. A group of women saw this, and they ran over to him and said, What are you doing? Do you want to die? That would be foolish. Your death can't bring our lives back. You must get out of here alive. You need to be a witness of our suffering and our death. That is our responsibility here today. Our responsibility today is to be witnesses of what we've learned about Jesus. Jesus died for all of us. Jesus rose from the dead for all of us. Jesus forgives all of our sins. Jesus gives us eternal life in heaven. Christians have been telling this good news for nearly 2,000 years, and now it's our turn. Are we willing to do our part? Are we really willing to tell others about Jesus? In many of our Christian churches today, the members of those churches are getting older and older, and there are less and less people in church every week. The attendance in worship is shrinking throughout Christian churches today. Be a strong witness for Jesus. Jesus needs you. He wants to use you. Be a strong witness for Jesus in your family, at school, at your job, in your neighborhood. Be a strong witness for Jesus right here in your own church. There's a third thing Ascension Day shows us today. Ascension Day tells us where we can get the power to be able to be a witness for Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, I am going to send you what the Father promised. What did the Father promise? Well, we know. The Father promised them his Holy Spirit, didn't he? The Holy Spirit would give to those disciples the power and the boldness they needed to be able to go out and let other people know about Jesus. Two weeks from today, we're going to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. And I'm going to talk a lot more about the power of the Holy Spirit then. But for now, the Holy Spirit gives us the power 
to make a big difference for Jesus in this world. Now, here's what's so neat about this. How do you get the power? You get the power simply from being around God's Word. You get the power of the Holy Spirit simply from being here in worship, simply from being in Bible class each week. You get the power of the Holy Spirit simply by reading the Word of God in the Bible. Whenever you are around the Word of God, the Holy Spirit's there, and He's given you power and strength for your life. Be around God's Word, because that's where you get the power to be a witness for Jesus. So many people miss out on this great power of the Holy Spirit, but you're getting this power right here today. You're getting the power of the Holy Spirit today, so you can be a strong witness for Jesus here in this difficult world. We're in a world today where it is not the normal to be a Christian, is it? It's not the normal, easy thing to do. And we need help. And God gives that help to you each and every week when you're around His Word. The ascension of Jesus is very important to us today, isn't it? The ascension of Jesus tells us just who Jesus really is. He is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. The ascension of Jesus tells us what we're supposed to do here on this earth. We're to be witnesses for Jesus. And the ascension of Jesus lets us know how we get that power and how we get that boldness to do that. We get it from the Holy Spirit. No wonder on this ascension day, the Bible says, after Jesus was taken up into heaven, the disciples worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed there praising God. Feel the presence of Jesus in your life again today. And let that presence of Jesus fill you with joy. And then go out and be witnesses for Jesus to everyone around you. You have the power. You got the power again today. The power of the Holy Spirit. God bless us as we go out together and share this great news of Jesus. Amen.